Hey guys, so today we are taking another look at Chrysler's 6.4 liter Hemi V8 engine. In the past few weeks we looked at the major flaws and problems of this engine, but for today we're going to be comparing the truck versus the SRT, or passenger car version you could call it. I know it's not always in an SRT vehicle, but I say that for simplicity. If you weren't aware, there are these two different versions of the 6.4 liter engine, one more performance based for the cars and SUVs, and one for the pickup trucks. So I wanted to analyze the differences between both. Whether you just own one of these engines and you're curious about the information, or you're looking to do a project and have one of these engines in your vehicle, hopefully you'll enjoy this video. So we'll start with an overview of the specs of the engine, and then we'll look at the differences back and forth of each engine, like the power output, block, exhaust manifold, and that sort of thing. So let's begin. So first, the overview. Dodge and Chrysler really started getting back into the Hemi vehicles in the early 2000s, and for 2006 they had five different SRT8 vehicles the Charger, Challenger, Magnum, Grand Cherokee, and 300. Those vehicles used a 6.1 liter Hemi V8 engine, but by 2010, Chrysler wanted to replace it with something bigger and better. They had displayed this 6.4 liter Hemi back in 2005, and that version had 525 horsepower and 510 pound-feet of torque. It became available in 2007 as a crate engine, but the 6.1 lived on in production vehicles. The 6.4 liter Hemi was then first launched in the 2011 Dodge Challenger SRT8, with variable camshaft timing and MDS in cars with automatic transmissions. The new engine has a few different names, like 392 Hemi for its cubic inches of displacement and reference to the first generation 392, its codename Apache, or just 6.4 liter Hemi. Starting in the 2014 model year, the heavy duty trucks and cab chassis got a revised version of the 6.4 liter, and that's a different variation that we'll be comparing to the performance based version. The engine's displacement size is shown on the front fender emblems and the engine coil pack covers, and for the US it typically reads 392 Hemi, as they still use the Imperial system. For those markets and countries that use metric, it usually says 6.4 liter instead, and some vehicles have a mix of both on the emblems and engine covers. I've also got some nice information from Dodge Garage, which is helpful in identifying some of the specs of these Hemi engines. There's a barcode label on the valve cover of any Gen 3 Hemi, showing a few lines of data that you can decipher. So the top line shows the engine assembly plant and date of manufacture, as well as the shift number and engine serial number. The bottom line shows the engine part number, displacement, and part number revision level. So now we'll go back and forth between the engines to see all the specs and various differences. So first, which cars is it found in? We can begin with the performance version. As mentioned, the engine began in the 2011 Challenger SRT8, and was then added in 2012 for the Charger, 300, and Grand Cherokee SRT8 until 2014. Moving forward to 2015, the engine was found in the Charger and Challenger SRT 392 from 2015 to 2018, before that trim level is discontinued, and also in the RT Scat Pack and similar variations, like the TA392 or Daytona 392, from 2015 to the present day. It continued in the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT and would get added into the 2018 Dodge Durango SRT and 2021 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon 392, both continuing to be offered to the present day. It will also be found in the fourth generation 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer when that vehicle comes out. Onto the truck version, starting in model year 2014, the Ram 2500 and 3500 trucks and Ram 3500, 4500, and 5500 cab chassis offered a revised version of the 6.4 liter, and by 2016, a couple years later, it fully replaced the 5.7 liter as the standard gas engine in the cab chassis models. Now let's move on to power. So these SRT versions are built for all out power and performance. After all, that's why most people would buy a vehicle like a Charger Scat Pack or a Durango SRT. Premium fuel is required, 91 or 93 octane gas. The factory output ratings from 2011 to 2014 were 470 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 470 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM. But 2015 did see a small increase of 3% in horsepower, up by 15 to 485, and a very small 1% increase in torque up to 475 pound-feet, and that's for the muscle cars. The Grand Cherokee only saw 5 horsepower increase with no change in torque, and the 300 SRT that lived on from 2015 to 2021, being exported globally, kept the same power output as the original 6.4 Hemis. It's also worth noting here that the Grand Cherokee and Durango models have a more restrictive cast iron exhaust manifold design, we'll talk a bit about that later, due to the all-wheel drive drivetrain of these SUVs, 
and that does reduce the output slightly to 475 horsepower at 6000 RPM and 470 pound-feet of torque at 4300 RPM. And overall for these performance versions, the engine redline is 6400 RPM. Now as for that engine for the trucks, it was redesigned for durability, better fuel economy under heavy loads, a broad torque curve, and a power band that was more suitable for hauling and towing, instead of the all-out power. Instead of the premium gas, this engine runs on the recommended 89 octane gas, but 87 is acceptable. The camshaft is also designed for low speed torque and not higher RPM horsepower. So the net result is substantially lower on paper, between 366 to 410 horsepower at 5600 RPM and 429 pound feet of torque at 4000 RPM. Again, horsepower will vary between the application. The engine redline here is lower, 5800 RPM. Now we can talk a bit about MDS and transmissions. As we are familiar with, with the 2009 to present 5.7 liter Hemi V8s, these 6.4s also have the multi-displacement system or MDS, which will shut off four cylinders under certain conditions to save fuel, up to 20% as Chrysler claims. This feature is found in all the automatic transmission applications and both the cars and trucks. Bob Lee, powertrain product team vice president, said, quote, the MDS was part of the engine's original design. This resulted in a cylinder deactivation system that is elegantly simple and completely integrated into the engine design. The benefits are fewer parts, maximum reliability, and lower cost. End quote. Transitions take place in under 0.04 seconds by cutting out the valve lifters. Energy is not lost by pumping air through those cylinders, though some power is lost through unnecessary compression. So again, MDS is found in all these engines that are paired with an automatic transmission, but of course there are some applications like the Challenger manuals which will not have the MDS. All of these engines also use variable cam timing. The performance version in the cars and SUVs are paired with either an 8HP 70 8-speed automatic or a Tremec TR6060 6-speed manual transmission, while the one in the Ram trucks are matched to a 6.6 RFE 6-speed automatic transmission, while some also get the optional Azen 6-speed auto. Now we can take a look at the engine block and rotating assembly. All the 392 Hemi blocks have the 6.4 liter writing cast above the oil pan rail, just as the 5.7 Hemi does as well. The blocks on the cars and SUVs are painted orange and machined and assembled at FCA's Saltillo engine plant in Mexico. The truck blocks, along with some Mopar service replacement blocks, are all painted black instead, so that's an easy visual way to tell the difference. Once the 6.4 trucks came out, they also got a thicker block known as Big Gas Engine or BGE, and either BG or BGE was cast on the side or the back of the block. These were just for the trucks at first, but I have heard that Chrysler began quietly using them across all 6.4 powered vehicles in 2017 and 2018, just because they are stronger. These thicker blocks have better casting and increased cylinder wall strength, making them better for engine builds. But of course, since they are newer, they're harder to find used, but again, easy to spot with the BG or BGE markings. Moving into technical specs, the bore is 4.09 inches, the stroke is 3.72 inches, and the crankshaft is made of forged steel, and this is the same on all engines, car or truck. The compression ratio is higher in the cars and SUVs, 10.9 to 1, and that's lowered almost 1 point to 10.0 to 1 because of a piston design change on the trucks. The higher compression ratio is just one aspect of being able to generate more power, as is true in this case. Both engines used hyper-eutectic pistons with oil squirters to reduce heat and a floating pin design that's attached to a powdered metal I-beam connecting rod. The truck piston design is a bit different, but they are still hyper-eutectic pistons. The length of that rod is the same as the Hellcat and Hellcat Red Eye engines, 6.2 inches. Now we can look at the cylinder heads and camshaft. The 392 Hemis used an aluminum twin plug cylinder head that of course improved on the past 6.1 liter Hemi, with larger valve sizes and upgraded port and chamber designs. Because of the improvements, bigger valves were able to be used, with an intake valve diameter of 2.14 inches and exhaust valve diameter of 1.65 inches. All of this is the same for both cars and SUVs and trucks. The only real difference for the cylinder heads between the cars and the trucks is the material used. 356 aluminum on the trucks and 319 aluminum on the cars, although the car version was later upgraded to 356 anyways. As for camshaft specs, that's a bigger difference as the truck application gets a different camshaft and part number entirely. So on the cars and SUVs, there is 286 degrees of intake, 288 degrees of exhaust duration, 0.571 inches of intake lift, and 0.536 inches of exhaust lift. 
On the trucks, we have 215 degrees of intake, 221 degrees of exhaust duration, 0.574 inches of intake lift, and 0.541 inches of exhaust lift. Next up is the intake and exhaust manifolds. The 6.4 intake manifold was a big change from the previous 6.1 Hemi. While that engine had an aluminum long runner intake manifold, the 392 in the passenger cars uses an active intake manifold that's made from black composite plastic. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have that same allure as that cast aluminum on those old SRTs, which just looked beautiful. It does have an active runner feature, however, that electronically varies the intake manifold's runner length for optimal horsepower and torque. Essentially, what you have here is an intake with two different routing paths for air, shorter, or longer. By having this dual path intake, you can then tune the intake to be effective over the entire power band. So here's a great but simple shot of how this active intake manifold works. The picture above shows the switch closed, so the incoming air takes the long path around the runner, which is better for low mid-end torque. The bottom shows the switch open, so the incoming air takes a shortcut from the center area, reducing the airflow restriction, which is better for top end power. All of that gets controlled by a solenoid inside the intake to direct the airflow based on some PCM variables. It's theoretically the best of both worlds. And to help get that air in, there is a front feed, 45 degree side mounted 80 millimeter throttle body. As for the exhaust manifolds, the performance engine uses a tubular free flowing exhaust manifold, and these look and act very similar to shorty headers. Now shifting over to the truck engine, there are a few minor changes. The intake manifold has a runner length that's designed to make max power from 3600 to 5000 RPM, and the throttle body is the same size, but it feeds through the top instead of the front. The 6.4 Hemi trucks and actually also the SUVs do have those cast iron exhaust manifolds that we mentioned earlier, and those are more restrictive than the tubular style found on the cars. That alone takes away 10 horsepower and 15 pound-feet of torque on the Durango and Jeep Grand Cherokee, and of course the trucks have a lot less power due to that, plus a lot of other reasons that we've talked about. We're almost done, but I just wanted to take a look at a few more specs of the 6.4. The weight of the engine is a whopping 582 pounds, and the firing order goes 1, 8, 4, 3, 6, 5, 7, 2, the same on all of these engines. The recommended oil used is 0W40 synthetic, and the engine holds 6.6 .6 liters of oil. The oil sump has a different location and material, front and aluminum on the cars and SUVs, and in the rear and made of steel on the trucks. Fuel pressure is 58 psi for both, but the minimum pump fuel flow rate is 317 pounds per hour or 200 liters per hour on the cars and SUVs, and 285 pounds or 180 liters per hour on the trucks. The injector flow rate is also different, 26.85 pounds per hour on the passenger vehicles, and 31.42 pounds per hour on the ram stuff. Okay, so now we can do just one final recap of all the differences. I'll show a chart for each engine from Dodge Garage just to make things more simple. If you want to read, make sure to pause on the screen for that information. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed going over all the differences between the two 6.4 liter Hemi variations and also looking at all the specs in general of this Hemi. It was a lot of fun to go in depth on this engine and let me know what you guys thought of all the info. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.